Teachers of Reddit, what was your how are my students this dumb moment? Don't know if this counts. But I was a TA for a semester in grad school, never again. One student submitted this paper I will never forget. Basically. The author was wrong because the student found the argument boring. In explaining the author's argument. He got most points wrong and then proceeded to say he had a better argument. His argument was the author's argument. Now that's just special. I asked my students to write a sentence and give an example. One of the students, age 12 stroke 13, asked what's an example? Actually really hard to explain. College instructor. You would be shocked. Just last year. Multiple students can't save word docs as PDFs. Students take smartphone pictures of every single slide while I lecture even though I upload them to our LMS. Personal favorite. When asked to insert a picture into a Word document. One student prints the Word doc. Prints the picture. Puts the picture on the Word doc. Takes a smartphone picture and uploads the file. Miss my millennial students. I have a poster on my wall that says something about not believing everything you read on the internet. And it attributes the quote to Abraham Lincoln. Student said. Wait. Did they have internet back then? Double quote. I once told my students that there was a time before the internet and they all laughed like we know dr. Aero girl. We're not dumb. Double quote. Followed by wait so how did you get data on your phone? Double quote. Fasapum. I teach swimming lessons and lifeguarding courses. During one. I was trying to teach them CPR and instead of showing them first. I told them to show me what they already knew about it. I then proceeded to observe 15 16 20 year olds do the weirdest sh to those poor training dolls. My favorite though was the kid who did a 2 foot jump onto the chest of the dummy. The dummy slid out from under his feet like a cartoon banana and he landed on his rear end on the pool deck. Good times. Are mermaids real? Followed shortly by I don't believe in dinosaurs. Double quote. She was 16. Once had a girl who thought there were people living on Venus. We just couldn't talk to them because they didn't have phones. One of my 16 year old students asked. While starting a multiple choice test. If it mattered what letter he chose. I just stared at him. Sometimes there are no words. I'm. Baffled. I need a follow up. Did he figure it out? One of my other students said yes. Dumbass. There's only one right answer. Double quote. He then face palm down said I'm a moron. Double quote. I didn't respond to either comment. Lol. He caught a case of the stupid that day. I taught human anatomy labs in college. We had three different practicals throughout the semester and every test we would put a couple of really easy questions. Or at least as easy as we could so that there was a slight mental break and a confidence boost. The last practical we did included the digestive, circulatory, and urogenital system. The structure that was used was the male model with a pointer stuck right in the middle of the shaft of the penis. The student missed it by answering that it was the urinary bladder. The student was male. I teach computer science. At GCSE level students have to learn four data types. Integer, whole numbers. Real, decimal numbers. Boolean, true or false, and string, a collection of characters. We had done 4 lessons on this because some of the group are a little less able. First thing lesson 5 I ask a student who we shall call add. To name the data type we would use for the number 47. Correct answer integer. Acceptable answer with explanation. Real. Add answers B. Puzzled I ask another student the same question. Integer he replies. I go back to add for the answer and he replies. B. I write integer on the whiteboard in 8 inch higher letters. Point to it and ask the question again. Add replies. B. I explain to him that the number 47 is a whole number and all whole numbers can be stored as type integer. I ask what data type we would use for the number 47 and he replies integer. Brilliant. I ask what data type we would use for the number 48 and the little darling replies. B. By now the whole group was in tears so we moved on. 
One year later he still can't not identify even the simplest of data types. University course, paper on witches, spelt witch throughout the whole paper. Favorite sentence, witches and broomsticks. Footnoted a phone number as a source. Marking those papers broke me. I teach in a district where kids get iPads in middle school. And laptops when they get to the high school. They don't know how to do anything on a computer. Cut and paste. Print. Tab. It's crazy what they never learned. I also taught in an iPad laptop school. This is so true. A lot of adults would say oh kids today are so touchy. But the truth is they can't type. Spell. Or no basic grammar. I teach intro. Geology. I gave a lab quiz on the density and buoyancy lab we had done the week before. One of the questions asked how are we able to build ships out of steel. Considering that we measured steel to be more dense than water the week before. Almost the entire class gave variants of the ocean is so big compared to a boat. That all the water is able to keep the boat afloat. Full stop. Full stop. As an answer. I get some version of this answer every semester. But it really struck me because so many of them put it. And they weren't just copying each other. Close bracket. This school happens to be right next to a bay. So I took a large. Uninteresting rock from the prep room and marched the students outside to the bay. I said this rock is about 8 kilos and has a density of about 2. 4 GCC. But. According to your last test responses. The bay is so big that it should float. Full stop. Full stop. I threw the rock into the bay and we all patiently waited for it to bob back up to the surface. I'm not a teacher but when school started back up I was put in German too and the most students didn't study over summer so the teacher came in and said hello class. We wore der summer. Comma hello class. How was summer? Comma and no one knew how to respond. She then took a student's items and threw it. She left the room saying dumb cops. Comma dumb head. She never returned and has been replaced by a sub. If this is true that's amazing. It's true. She also got really mad when students couldn't pronounce W correctly. W is pronounced V. Something like worst, sausage, is pronounced more like worst, and she almost broke a desk because of it. Our new German teacher is a lot calmer and tries to correct students when they mess up. I'm an English teacher and coach of the boys cross country team at my school. One of my runners showed up to a meet wearing a suit and tie. As well as slacks even though I specifically told all the runners to wear their singlets and race shoes not only the day before. But in an email earlier that morning and right before they all got on the buses. I said last call. If anyone needs to get their singlets and race shoes. Go grab them now. Kid sometimes. This is a classmate of mine. During English. She asked if she had to spell her name. In English. I live in Belgium. During biology. We watched a documentary about the ocean. When a manta appeared. She said. Look. That bird can dive. Double quote. She said that she's a vegetarian because she only eats meat she likes. When talking about climate change. She was saying that our class is full of horrible people because we don't do that much for the climate. When we asked her what she does for the climate. She said she doesn't do anything for the climate because other people need to do that. She thinks she's the smartest girl in class. I am a teacher now but this happened when I was in medical school. The only way we would ever be let off from attending something mandatory was if we had a sick leave from our hospital. So naturally students got really good at lying about having diarrhea and migraines. But if you had too many of the same complaints, the system would flag it and you'd have to complete a lengthier evaluation and your parents guardians would be notified. So one kid had the idea of faking appendicitis. He faked all the signs and symptoms so well, he was after all a medical student, they almost took him to surgery. None of my students have ever been dumb but they had brain farts at times. I was teaching in the east end of London in a school that was 98% Bengali. I had one lesson about our names and that they have meanings to our families. Culture. Or in other languages etc. I shared why my name was what it was and the meaning behind it. Some children were sharing about their names. 
One of my students got very excited and yelled out what does my name mean? The whole class did a face palm. His name was Mohammed. I'm not a teacher but in my IB math studies course. We spent a good hour and a half explaining to a group of girls that you can't divide anything by zero. It was frustrating to watch them try to argue that you can divide 7 calculators into groups of zero. My teacher just couldn't comprehend the people he had to deal with. I wouldn't call him dumb but I did stop and stare at him thinking it was a joke. When I was student teaching last year one of my students made a comment about the 52 states I corrected him and said there are 50 states and he asked me if I remembered to count both Washingtons. As in Washington and Washington. D. C. Not a teacher. But was helping my friend who's a TA go over some first year essays. It was an essay about video games. And aside from the format being non-existent. One of the first sentences was something along the lines of there are many examples of video games. Such as the Wii and PS4 and Zelda. Unfortunately. She wasn't allowed to grade any papers below 50%. He got a 50%. Last year I was a TA for gender studies at a reasonably well ranked university in the US. I asked students to write a short story about how life for humans would be if we reproduced in a different way and how it would affect society. For example. We grow our babies in jars in the hospital. How would that affect society? I told them not to write anything they wouldn't want their old lady teaching team to read. I got 4 pages of explicit spider pornography. Why can't I shake the feeling that they just turned in something that they were already working on? I teach on the college level and students try to convince me dumb stuff is true a lot. At least once a semester a student will try to fight with me saying Africa is a country. George Clooney was the first president right? 10th grader. Coach, I was a baseball coach as well for a high school. Our bio teacher was talking about menstrual cycles. What is that? 9th grade female. Coach. I walked into the weirdest, women's, restroom. There were toilets with no stalls. I couldn't figure out how to pee in them you walked into the men's bathroom. Those were urinals you saw though. How to men pee in them? Same 9th grade female. What is Vladimir Lenin's first name? 8th grader, I replied Joseph. Does a male octopus have 8 testicles? 9th grade boy. In history class. Me. I'm thinking of a fruit that is yellow and very sour. Student. Chicken box. What a fucking lemon. Three weeks into writing a research paper. Okay today we'll continue writing the body paragraphs of the essay. Double quote. Student. What essay? Double quote. That sounds like what my class would do to try and get out of an assignment. As well as complain in an attempt to get the deadline pushed back. This was high school college English 1301. She cracked down on that in 1302 by making them show the paper at certain stage or beyond every week or so. I asked my class of 5th graders what city they live in. And the first response was Texas. Plot twist. They lived in Michigan. Four students in the same class had copied work from each other for an assignment on Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. I don't know why they thought I wouldn't recognize four of the exact same paper. But the cherry on top was the fact that each paper made several references to the ideas of March. I'm not sure which was worse. Plagiarizing an idiot or not even being able to see the difference between ideas and ideas. It was a reading comprehension class. By the way. Not a teacher. But once my classmate didn't remember the difference between proper and common nouns. He repeatedly said the word pen was a proper noun. Like 10 times. And then he said it was an improper noun. Another time. The same kid basically spelled pencil as pencil. Well. It's Spanish equivalent. We're in Latin America. Did I mention we were well into the final years of high school? And that this ish tea you learn in the first grade of elementary school over here? Not my story. But my brother's. I still chuckle about it. He taught at a trade school. And he's a super nice patient guy. One of his students calls in him in a panic that she can't get to school BC of a flat tire. 
Shay frantic and has no one else to call for help. NP. This will be a good teaching moment. So he drives out to help her. And as he's examining the tire. Explains to her that the she's got a nail right in the top. And is going to show her how to change it. She scoffs at him. Rolls her eyes. And proceeds to tell him that that's absolutely impossible bc the tire is flat on the bottom. Not the top where the nail is. Needless to say. My brother didn't even bother explaining to her how to change the tire. When one of those little shits ate sulfur in my class just for laughs. Oh wait that was me. My high school chemistry teacher told us the story of when she was interning somewhere and pipetting liquids by mouth as needed, rather than having the cool rubber suction bulbs we used in class. At one inevitable point. She got some of something in her mouth. She didn't really know at the time what the label meant, but did keep note of what it said so she was able to tell us. In hindsight. That it was glacial, pure, acetic acid. So of course rather than spitting out the random chemical. She swallowed it. She knows now that she's very lucky it wasn't something else in that concentration. But apparently she did have some bad tummy upset for a bit from it. And it messed with her throat on the way down too. She did that and now teaches at a school for overachievers. After having had a successful career in the chemical end of cosmetics. There's hope for everyone. Not me. But when my wife and I took a Lamar's class for the birth of our first child. There was a couple in the class that had no clues. This was in the late 80s. So no cell phones. The mother to be went into labor early. She was able to get a hold of her husband at work to let him know. He asked how far apart the contractions were. To which she replied to. Well. The instructor had said to wait until they were 4 minutes before going to the hospital. So to call him back when they got there. Needless to say. Things didn't go as planned. I teach college in the UK so 16-18 year olds. Mainly teach maths research so they've failed before but no excuse. Group of them having an argument. I go over and ask what's wrong. Majority of them trying to tell one student that you get 10 marks on every exam just for writing your name and ID number on the front. Other one only disagreed because he said last time got less than that on the exam. Dot. Marks just for correctly filling out your name. I think that's a standard myth. When I took the SAT. The well known fact was you got 100 points just for filling out the name. School aid and other stuff correctly. Not like it matters. 100 out of 1600 meant that you should have been locked in a mental hospital and not anywhere near objects sharper than a grape. Not a teacher but in AP English the girl I was partnered for writing assignments with not only still used a lot in essays. But a little to sound any variation thereof. Her writing style and grammar matched that of a second grader. And I had to mark up her papers just so that I could read them at all. She got furious with me each time I defaced her work. Drafts only the two of us would actually see. And when I asked her about her spelling she said her computer didn't have spell check. The year before that. The teacher messed with my honors English class to get us to question and debate things. He successfully convinced at least 16 people that the Apollo 11 moon landing was faked. With one girl reduced to Tez because her lying aunt worked for NASA. He debriefed us every time he did it. But the same people fell for his claims every time. That was also the class where a DVD froze and one girl asked about 30 seconds later. How are they standing so still? Double quote.